Okay, let's look at a couple examples, but before we get too far into that, I just wanted to point out uh, the formula that we developed in the last video. Uh, we did it all in terms of x, but if it's more convenient, if the functions are maybe solved the other way around, uh, this whole function is very adaptable, and I won't run through the proof again. Uh, but you could easily turn this into arc length is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of y. <laughs> that prime of y squared dy. Uh, so if you have a couple functions that are, you know, more like x equals like natural log of y or something like that, um, I guess that wouldn't be too hard to solve for y, actually. But anyway, if it's hard to solve for y and you'd rather just do it in terms of y, uh, you can adapt the formula like that. Okay, let's take a look at a couple examples. Uh, so let's talk about the arc length of this function, natural log of secant of x from 0 to pi over 4. And there's nothing too fancy going on with that function. Uh, you can see the graph of it right here. It looks pretty straightforward. Uh, but again, this gets into what I was talking about in the last video, where unless you set up the function kind of carefully, the integral's nasty. So you, you get the feeling maybe they set this function up carefully to be integrable. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look. It shouldn't be too hard to at least set the integral up. Um, so let's uh, say we want the arc length for this. Which would be the integral from 0 to pi over 4. And there's that pesky square root that can make our life difficult. Uh, 1 plus derivative of the function squared dx. Okay, uh, so we just need to remind ourselves of what the derivative, or not, maybe not remind ourselves, but figure out what the derivative of natural log of secant is. So over here on this side, go back to calc 1. Say, what is the derivative of natural log of secant of x? Um, that's chain rule, right? Say the derivative of natural log of anything is 1 over that thing and then times the derivative of that thing. So the derivative of secant uh, is secant tangent. Just in case it's been a little while since you have done your derivatives. Uh, nicely enough for us, uh, the secants cancel and the derivative of natural log of secant of x uh, is just tangent of x. So we get the square root of 1 plus tangent squared. And the square root of 1 plus tangent squared, um, that stuff inside of there might ring a little bell for you. 1 plus tangent squared happens to be secant squared. Of course, the square root of secant squared uh, is the absolute value of secant. We're going from 0 to pi over 4, which are positive values, so I'll drop the absolute value. Okay. Oops. L limits of integration, 0 to pi over 4. Uh, so it may have been a little while since you uh, tried to integrate secant. Over four. Uh, it may have been a little while since you tried to integrate secant. It's one of the formulas that we have in that table of basic integrals. Uh, but that becomes the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. We're evaluating that from 0 to pi over 4. And with a little bit of work, uh, I'm just going to skip and go uh, straight to the punchline there. Uh, but you, with a little bit of work, you can fill in those values and get that integral.
Okay, let's look at another example. Let's get that out of there. Okay, uh, so here's another one. And again, setup seems fairly straightforward. So arc length, oops, let's get on the right layer. Arc length should be the integral from one to four of the square root of one plus, and we'll just have to work out the derivative of this function. Uh, so again, over here on the side, the derivative of two thirds x minus one to the three halves. Um, chain rule again. So bring the three halves down. Subtract one from the exponent. And chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside, which happens to just be one. So ultimately we just got down to x minus one to the one half. Okay, so that's nice. Uh, we'll put x minus one to the one half in here. And the reason that's nice, of course, is we've got a square root and squared, one half and two powers. Uh, which cancel each other out. So our integral is now looking like the integral from one to four of the square root of one plus x minus one. Um, this is even better uh, because the ones cancel. So we just have the integral from one to four of x, square root of x, which I will rewrite as x to the one half for ease of integration. Um, so this isn't hard to finish out, but let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so this integrates to two-thirds x to the three halves. I'll plug in one and four. And let's see, so plugging in four, square two, eight. So two-thirds times eight minus plugging in one. We'll just give you minus two-thirds. Uh, so 16 thirds minus 2 thirds would be 14 thirds. Okay, and we are done with that example. Uh, I do want to make one other point with this example before we finish this video out. Um, it is entirely possible that maybe this problem had originally been written the other way around. So I'm just going to swap my x's and y's. So suppose this had been the function x equals y minus 1 to the 2 thirds uh, from uh, y is 1 to 4. And I think some students look at this and immediately they're not comfortable with an x equals function. And they think about solving this for y. And you can do that. The algebra is actually not super terrible to solve this for y. I'm not going to do it, but you could do it. And it turns out that the arc length integral is a little bit worse that way around. So I would just encourage you, if it's solved x equals, uh, to think about just setting the function up in terms of in terms of y, right? So because the calculus now is all just exactly the same here, uh, the only thing that's changing really is I need to write a different letter, but this is just y minus one and dy. And this is y and dy. I mean, it's exactly the same calculations, obviously. And you, you come down to that. Uh, so don't be afraid to, if you see a uh, function that's x equals, uh, don't be afraid to try it that way because it, it's literally exactly the same formula, just with a different letter. Um, okay, so aside from possibly reviewing Simpson's rule for that very last question on the homework, I think you are ready to start the homework and figure out some arc lengths.